A principle that I've learned in my own recovery, and remember, there's three recoveries, right? There's the unfaithful spouse's recovery, there's the betrayed spouse's recovery, and then there's the potential recovery of the marriage. And so today I want to really focus on, again on our own individual recoveries. I've learned that recovery or a recovered or healed life or a recovered or a healed marriage is never an accident. You just can't find anybody that's gotten to the other side of betrayal or addiction and seen their marriage saved where you're going to sit down with them at the dinner table and say, so how did you find healing? How did you forgive each other? And how did you get to where you're at? They're never going to say, it just happened. It doesn't work like that. Just like becoming a healthy individual mentally, emotionally, or even spiritually, if that's your deal, doesn't happen by accident. It happens by intentionality. And so many times I talk to spouses who some are unfaithful, some are betrayed, and they'll say, you know, I just, it's, it's not working or we're stuck. And my first response always is, well, what recovery work have you done? If you've ever asked me a question on Twitter or YouTube, my response has probably always been, well, what recovery work have you done? Because if you haven't done any significant recovery work, you're going to be stuck. And I want to make suggestions for you that will work and help you get unstuck. Because you have to be intentional. And so many times, the unfaithful spouse will find themselves sucked into the despair and pity that we feel towards ourselves because we've completely screwed up our life, our marriage, our family, everything that we have held so dear at one time, we have really held loosely and everything is in chaos and we don't want to do recovery work. We'd rather get drunk or lay on the couch or just sleep or just get lost in TV or find some way to escape from the pain and the agony that we are feeling. I want to teach you a principle today that I learned actually while playing college baseball for Augie Garrido. Uh, it helped me in college baseball, it helped me in professional baseball. And it's a principle that, you know, lots of people will say, you know, you get out of it what you put in. But I have found what I learned in college and professional baseball to be true in recovery, which is early on you don't get out of it what you put in. You actually get less back than what you're putting in. What I started to realize was I was doing all this work, I was reading books, I was meeting with therapists, I was doing everything that I knew to do, but I wasn't seeing the fruit, I wasn't seeing the payoff, and it was frustrating. But I started to realize that that is how you develop tenacity, that's how you build progress. You're just not going to, and it's unrealistic to expect that early on, you're going to be met with this, I give and he or she gives. I do this and they do that. No, because if you're an unfaithful spouse, or even if you're a betrayed spouse, your partner or your spouse is not always at the same place. And so it's unrealistic to expect that any movement on your part is going to move them in their heart. It's just not likely. There's too much bitterness, anger, resentment. There's too much water underneath the bridge. So a better expectation, especially as an unfaithful spouse, is to realize I'm not going to just get back what I deserve or want because I'm doing a little bit of recovery work. Here's a frustration case in point that many unfaithfuls experience is that they'll start to try and gain momentum. It could be trying to go on in dates. It could be trying to connect. It could be trying to be intimate. It could be trying to just move the, the football of recovery down the field. And the betrayed spouse immediately second guesses their motives. They immediately say, well, you're just doing this for A. Like, you just want to avoid a divorce. You just don't want to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars in, in a divorce. You just don't want to lose the kids. You just be, want to be around the kids. You're not here for me. I mean, there's all these things that the betrayed may fire off, which kind of second guesses the unfaithful's motives. And so the unfaithful gets really angry, really upset, really bitter, and says, 
you, you just don't believe me. You'll never believe me. And it's like, hold on. That's the absolute wrong response, unfaithful, because why wouldn't the betrayed second guess your motives when you've lived a double life or had an affair or violated the, the moral agreement, the wedding vows, whatever you want to call your situation, you've violated that. You've trampled on that. You've transgressed that. So your motives are going to be questioned for quite some time. And if you have nothing to hide, then that's okay. My response to Samantha was, you can question my motives all you want. I have nothing to hide. I only want to help you. I only want to help us. You can question me all you want. I hope that you will see over time, over my consistent effort, that I want only you, only us, and only our family. So you can second guess my motives. That's fine because I love you and want to save this relationship and will do whatever it takes. If you're an unfaithful spouse frustrated that your betrayed spouse constantly second guesses your motives, it's normal. It's all part of it. It is simply part of the process that is going to need to take shape for you to win back and woo back your betrayed spouse's heart. That lesson I learned about you don't get what you give back early on is not necessarily true as you build momentum and you build healing because I can tell you, while it may not be instant, as I have invested into recovery and as I still invest into our marriage, let me tell you that it comes back to me with Samantha incredibly so. Our marriage is stronger than it's ever been because we have both made the commitment to invest, to continue to invest, even with the temptation time and time again to get angry about life and unmet expectations and unfulfilled expectations and disappointment after disappointment, as we continue to invest and as we continue to give to the marriage, it does come back, but not early on. Early on, it's a bit of a test to see how committed are you to your own recovery. How committed are you to making it safe for your spouse's recovery? And how committed are you to the potential recovery of the marriage? Mm -hmm.